Say, this is God's holy word, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Holy men wrote, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that same inspiration is on Kubis tonight to preach, on me to hear, and we're going to step into supernatural revelation of revival, and we're going to get it in Jesus' name. Right. He says, verse 4, he who observes the wind, we just did it now, and waits for all conditions to be favorable will not sow. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. Verse 5 is the important one. I think we touched a little bit on it on Friday night. Or was it Wednesday? I can't remember. As you know not what is the way of the wind. Okay. You don't know where wind's coming from. You don't know where it's going to. All of a sudden you say, hey, look at the wind. You actually don't see wind. You only see results of wind. Okay. As you know not the way of the wind or how, listen to this one, or how the spirit comes to the bones in the womb of a pregnant woman. Even so, you know not the work of God. So tonight I want to write a few things down and we're going to look at it carefully and slowly and in depth. Wind is mentioned, clouds is mentioned. If winds and clouds come together, what do you get? Thank you. <laughs> awesome rain. Okay, what does rain do? It waters the earth. What happens after the earth is watered? Fruit will come. Remember, it's, it's mentioned over and over in the Bible in James chapter 5 or 17. It says, Elijah was a man like us, and he prayed that it should not rain for three years and six months. It did not rain. He prayed again, and it rained, and the earth brought forth fruit. Okay? So what is the purpose of rain? To water the earth, to bring forth fruit. You are made out of the dust of the earth, and if the rain of heaven fall on you, you're going to bring forth fruit. For he is the vine, you are the branches, and herein is my Father pleased that you bear forth much fruit. So you are supposed to be a fruit bearer. You can only do it if you have the rain of the Spirit. So without the rain of the Spirit, you're lacking fruit. Okay? So we need rain. Rain talks about revival. So does wind talk about revival. And uh, throughout the ages, the people that talked about revival were not stupid idiots. They had, they had experience. So if you read about past revivals, don't throw it away. You make a fool of yourself. This is our history. The Bible is a, is a book that we can look at what God did in those days. And over and over, read through the Psalms. How many times is it? Remember the works that I did before. Remember the works that I did before. And then he says in Psalm 78, so that you can call to God to say, do it again in our days. So if I have no record, how can I ask for God to do it again? And every time God does it, he do it in greater proportions, in greater measures, in greater abundance. So we are about to stepping into something that will eclipse any revival of the past, but it's still going to be a revival. Right? So we need to know what happened in 46, in 1906, in 1840, in 1724. We need to know about the Great Awakenings. We need to know about Azusa Street. We need to know about the healing revivals. We need to know it. Right? But that's not where we're going to stop because when we get it, it's going to be much more. And tonight, don't switch off. You've got to listen to the whole message because we, we hear people that is eloquent in speech that I am not because I'm standing with Paul. You know, I didn't come with the eloquency of men's wisdom and speech, but I do come with a demonstration of the spirit and power. But we listen nowadays to people that are so eloquent in speech that do not even lay hands on people anymore. They do not pray for the sick in their churches anymore. But they are the super apostles of our country. But they don't minister to people. They don't lay hands on people. And they prophesy that there will not be another revival, but there will be an apostolic movement. Hey, people, that sounds good, but it doesn't do good. It doesn't bring sinners in. It doesn't get the lost saved. It doesn't get the backsliders restored. It doesn't get the sick healed. I'm very honest. I ministered in these places. We need power of God to come into our midst. We need the rain. We need the wind. We need the fire. And you can oppose me as much as you want, come sit with me in the Bible, brother. Come take your word of God and say, the Bible says there will not be another revival. Don't say, I say. 
You're making a fool of yourself. Sorry if I come over hard in the beginning of this message. It's not I want to come. But I want to say, if we don't get another revival, the church is in big, 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 big time trouble. Okay. So you're, not, you're, you're not switching off, are you? Don't go switch off and say, Quibber said, no, no, you didn't listen to the message. You did not listen to the message. Hmm? He talks about the womb of a woman. Something comes into this womb of the woman called spirit of God. He says, and we compare that to we do not know the rain. He says, and because we do not know how the spirit comes into the bones in the womb of a woman, we do not know. What does it say? The work of God. Please, right now, I, I really feel God has just touched me. I'm prepared to take the challenge of any person that want to talk to me about revival. Send me your email, I'll answer it. Okay? Send me your DVD, I'll look at it, and I'll answer it for you. But don't get pe God's people in bondage not to pray for revival. After, after this series of meetings, I, I believe, I believe with all my heart here, we're going to see the power of God like never before. We're going to see people coming in. We're going to see people coming in. I tell you, uh, people that have a, a four-time split in a year in their church, and after every split, the church becomes smaller, they are not supposed to brag about there will not be another revival. They must actually say, we have not got another revival. They mustn't say there's not going to be another. The, the shrinking of your church doesn't prove that God is at work. It proves that maybe Ichabod, maybe God has left and he's joined another church. I'm sorry, but somebody's got to speak something. It doesn't help. You're angry to me and then you shout on TV, there's not going to be a revival. We believe revival. We preach revival. And I'm not shouting to make the emphasis. I'm going to go to the Word of God, man. Okay? So we do not, we do not, we do not know the work of God because we do not know how the wind comes and, and stuff like that. Okay? So let's go to John chapter 3. Father, thank you that the rain will stay away from this roof so that we can have church without noise. Let it rain on the earth outside there. In Jesus' name. Okay, as you, as you find your way to John chapter 3, there's some 3.16s that I'd love to mention tonight. John chapter 3, just look this way. John chapter 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in should not perish, but have everlasting life. 1 Timothy 3.16 says, Great is the mystery of godliness. You know, God was revealed in the flesh, seen by angels, taken up in glory, like that. Okay? Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration. And you can use it for a proof, for doctrine, for teaching, all right? Okay, so uh, just keep that in mind while we read tonight. All scripture is given by inspiration. Second Peter 1, verse 21, holy men of old wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 3, all the holy saints. It's nothing like church. No Bentley, no Aston Martin, no Citation Jet, nothing. There's nothing like church. There's nothing, there's nothing like church. If they bring my Aston Martin tonight and say, choose between going on with a meeting and take a drive in your Aston, Aston, I say, take your Aston, you know where you can shove it up. All right, let's have church. When it comes to church, that's it, man. That's it. I'm addicted to church. Now, there was a certain man among the Pharisees, Andre. There was a certain man among the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler, a leader, an authority. This is not some pompoinky, pompoinky. This guy is he this guy is an authority in Jewish teachings. He's the leader of the Pharisees. He's not some sucker sitting somewhere, okay? Came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, acknowledge him as teacher. We we know, I, I want you to listen, and are certain that you have come from God as a teacher. For no one can do these signs, wonder works, miracles, produce the proofs that you do, unless God is with you. Jesus answered, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, 
that unless a person is born again, anew and from above, he cannot ever see, know, and be acquainted with and experience the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter his mother's womb again and be born? Now, please, just stick to me there in Ecclesiastes. As you know not the way of the wind, or the Spirit of God in the way find its way into the bones and the womb of a woman, so you do not know the work of God. Rabbi, we know that you are sent from God. For this miracle, signs and wonders can no man do unless God be with him. Jesus said, Nicodemus, you heard the sound, but you don't know where the bell is hanging. He says, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Okay? Nicodemus says, how can a man enter his mother's womb? Okay, listen to this. As you know not, you're going to get it maybe by the third time. As you know not the way of the wind. As you know not the way of the spirit in the bones in the womb of a woman. So you know not the works of God. Nicodemus, we know that you must come from God because there's miracles and signs you cannot do with God. Nicodemus, you must be born again. Nicodemus says, how can I enter my mother's womb? Okay, and be born. Okay, listen, just keep it there. Yeah, I see your eyes are doing, uh, 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 but you don't know it's coming, but you don't know what's coming. Here it comes. Jesus answered, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, unless a man is born of water, and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Verse 8, the wind blows. Uh -oh. Okay, seal it. Lord, revelation, knowledge, eyesight to be open, supernatural wisdom. The wind blows where it wills, and you hear its sound. Yet you know not where it comes from, nor where it's going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Okay. Okay, just look this way. As you know not the way of the wind, neither the way of the Spirit in the womb of a woman, so you know not the works of God. Nicodemus, you must be a teacher from God, but look at this wondrous. Nicodemus, you must be born again. How can I enter my mother's womb? What happens in the womb? The womb says the Spirit comes in, and you know not how it comes in. As you do not know the way of the wind, so you do not know how the wind comes into the womb of a woman. So Jesus, knowing he's speaking to Nicodemus, who is the authority in Jewish teachings, says to him, Nicodemus, you must be born of the Spirit. Nicodemus, how can I enter the womb? He says, Nicodemus, the wind blows. Jesus is referring to Ecclesiastes because he's testing the knowledge of the man that says we know that you are sent from God. So he's checking to see how far he will go with the scriptures. He says, Nicodemus, the wind blows. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going. So is it with everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus says, how can all this be possible? Okay, so Nicodemus says, yeah, I know. I hear, but if I compare scripture. How can it be possible that the wind can again blow over an unformed thing and make life come forth from it that will be different than the life I got when the wind and the spirit blew into my mother's womb? How can this be? I hope somebody will see it here tonight. Jesus replied, you are the teacher of Israel and you do not know? Neither do you understand they are strange to you. Okay. Jesus said, I tell you, we speak what we know. We absolutely know what we are speaking about. Job 32 verse 8 says the following. You don't have to go there. I'll just quote it. Job 32 with eight, verse 8 says the following. There is a spirit. There is a spirit. On the inside of man. And the inspiration of the Almighty. He 
is that understanding. This is going to be the most profound message that you've heard in your life. Okay. Nicodemus, you must be born. How can I enter my mother's womb? Jesus said, remember, as you know not the way of the wind, neither the way of the spirit in the mother's womb, so you know not the things of God, the works of God. But Nicodemus, you're the teacher of Israel. Don't you know the stuff? You're supposed to know. Nicodemus says, how can it happen? He says, the wind, Nicodemus. The wind. The wind, Nicodemus. Jesus, the wind, Nicodemus, the wind blows, and you don't know where it's coming from. So if somebody's born again, it means a spiritual thing will happen that you cannot explain as you do not know the things of God. He says, but I'm talking to you about stuff that I know. So here comes Job, and he prophesies in Job 32. He says, there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty Gives it understanding, okay? Just listen to me. There is a spirit man, and the, and, and, and the inspiration of the Almighty gives it understanding. We quoted 2 Peter 1, verse 21. Oh, holy men of old wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit came upon the Spirit on the inside of the prophet. When the Holy Spirit connected with that man's spirit, inspiration gave him understanding and he could write and he could write as long as the connection was there from spirit to spirit wind blow bam wham inspired understanding another proof second timothy 3 verse 16 all scripture is given by inspiration. So every time they wrote, there it is again, a second confirmation out of the word of God. Spirit connected to a spirit, wind blow. And the, the most funniest thing is in the Bible, the word wind and spirit and breath is the exact same word. So the breath of God breathed, the wind of God blew, the spirit of God came, touched the spirit on the inside of man, causes, bam, understanding. So every person that ever wrote had a personal revival in writing. Okay, so out of revival, listen to this, out of revival comes most of the songs we sing. Out of revival comes most of the revelations we have. Out of revival comes breakthrough in teaching new doctrines that we didn't hear before. So revival, every time open the door to see, every time open the door to hear songs from heaven. That's why there's so many books and songs that are dry. People are writing songs. They had a revival in 94. They had a revival in 95. And they wrote songs under that revival. Now they keep on writing songs. And we keep on getting the new CDs. And say, there's nothing in this new CD. There's nothing in this new city. There's nothing in this new city. But I remember the first 10 that came out. Every song you could take and sing it in your church and the wind would blow when you played the song that came out of the revival. You don't have to say amen. I'll say amen for your sake. Amen, quivers. That's good. This thing is still broken. Okay, amen. But in any case, don't worry about that. We'll preach like us. Okay, I hope somebody is getting something of what I'm trying to say, okay? Born again. What Jesus in actual fact saying, if you are born again, you can actually know. <laughs> Nobody got that, so let's turn to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2. Did you get that? Man, I'm ready for the word, are you? Super ready. Super ready. Let's walk at the bottom and just talk a little. I'm going to place my life, if somebody comes with doctrine, I say to him, prove. Take me to your church on Sunday and show me the stuff work that you preach your people. Have your conference, come show me. Because miracles are no proof. Paul says, this is the proof that I'm an apostle. Science, wonders, and miracles. Paul says it, not me. Okay, 1 Corinthians 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or wisdom, so do I, 1 Corinthians 2. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness, fear, trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power. In demonstration. Demonstration 
of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. How about we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that came to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Okay? Just remember that. Maybe we'll touch it today, maybe next week. There's a hidden wisdom because God had planned before the foundation of the world for our glory. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, here we have it. I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared to them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knows no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that God hath freely given us, which things we all speak not in the words of man's wisdom, but by the Holy Ghost, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things. But we have the mind of Christ, chapter 3. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, for you are yet babies in Christ. Oh, my goodness. Privacy. What are you talking about, my bro? I read it. Can I, can I repeat it and repeat it another time and repeat it another time? As you know not the way of the wind, neither the way of the spirit in the bones in the womb of a woman, so you know not the works of God. Hmm? Nicodemus, I know the things of God. So if I speak, I speak because I'm knowing it. You're the leader of Israel, and you want to tell me you don't know it? So Nicodemus, here it comes. You must be born again. Oh Lord, how will I be born again? Nicodemus, as the wind blows, and you don't know where it comes from, you don't know where it goes to. You must be born of the Spirit. Nicodemus, if you're born of the Spirit, you are supposed to come to the knowledge of the things and the workings of God. You just acknowledge that I come from God because no man could do these wonders. But when I challenge you on your knowledge, you don't really know. And that's what happened to Israel. That's why they crucified him. First Corinthians 2. Have they known? <laughs> Please listen to the words. They would not have crucified him. So they didn't know. If they had known, they would not have crucified him. Okay? Then he comes to say, he says, no man knows what's on the inside of him. You can get glimpses of prophetic words and say, I see you had a dream last week. But you can't sit there and know my life. Because my spirit on the inside of me is the me that you don't really know. So no man knows on the inside of man what he really is except the spirit. So no one knows. Listen to the word no, 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 no. So no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God which is from God. Now listen to this. But we brothers have not received the spirit of this world re referring to the Jewish rabbi uh, law, Sadducee, Pharisee world for those who want to do the whole study. Okay? He says, but we have received the Spirit which is from God so that we can know. Somebody's got to walk with me today. So we have received the Spirit of God that we can know the things that God has so lavishly bestowed on us. Keep it there and hang it back on verse 9. What the eye hath not seen, what the ear hath not heard, what has not come up in the heart of man? God already prepared for us, revealed to us. But it's revealed by the Spirit. So the natural man, no matter how many times you quote the Scripture, he cannot see what eye has not seen. He cannot hear what ear has not heard. He cannot think what's, what heart has not think because it's revealed by the Spirit. It goes on to say, so we can know the things that God has given us. So that spiritual must be compared to spiritual. Yeah. 
Oh, come on, this revival stuff that you're preaching. Sorry, you can only talk about it if you're spiritual. If you've got spiritual revelation, you can come talk to me. Don't shout the stuff that everybody preaching because it's popular. Show that it's doing something. Show that it's getting the world saved, the backslider restored, the sick healed. Show that the people are coming out of cancer and HIV. Show that you are the church of Jesus Christ, not some dead formalistic organization. Somebody needs to speak as prophets again. Hmm. He says, but the natural man will not receive the things of the Spirit. Okay, sorry if I talk about this. But I spoke at little groups, small groups, greater groups, pastors, fraternals, pastors, conferences. And I challenged them with the word. And before Almighty God, there's no way they could answer me because... Every time, yeah, but, I say, but the scripture, brother, the, how do you pass the word? Yes, but, you know, we can interpret it this way. I said, to suit your doctrine. No, you can't interpret it that way. You can't say the kingdom suffers violence and the violent take it by force, and we are the violent people taking the kingdom. No, the kingdom is for meek and gentle people. That scripture that says the kingdom suffers violence, he's talking about the Pharisees and Sadducees that came to the baptism of John and wanted to push himself into the kingdom. Jesus says, from the time of John until now. So now it stops. It started with John's baptism, but it's stopping now with me. Now that I start preaching, that period of storming into the kingdom is over. The kingdom suffers violence because of those violent men that want to take it by force. From John till now. But now, I speak it to people. And they say, yes, Krubus, but, you know, we can't change it because it's the number one in our series on the apostolic. This is page number one. Our teaching on the apostolic is the kingdom must be taken by force. So you can't throw the book away. Throw the stupid book away. Sorry, I'm not in, a in reaction. I just say, people refuse. They hear it. They see it. I prove to them out of the Bible that John was Elijah to come. Jesus says it. Then they say, in these last days when the Elijah movement comes. There's no Elijah movement. We're going to be the Christ generation. We're not going for Elijah. We're going for Christ. The world is not waiting for Elijah. The world is waiting for Christ. The world is waiting for the sons of God to be man. I prove to them out of the Bible, this is what, yes, but you know, we, we can't take that away because our course, throw your course away. Yeah. Write another one that is biblical. Sorry, uh, somebody needs to speak as a prophet. Do you exalt yourself? No, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Bible. Then people refuse to change because of popularity. I tell you, brother, if you change, you'll be more popular. Because the people will honor you because you got the guts to say, we were wrong, but we're going to go for the Bible. Hmm? So I look at those people and I say, Lord God Almighty, this is leaders. And they know not. Listen to me. They are in the church, saved, washed in the blood. Believe in Jesus, but as natural as anything. Listen, I'll, I'll show it to you. Paul writes to the Corinthian church. I did this Friday night, so I don't want to spend too much time there. He says, when I wrote to you, you stood behind in no gift. I want to help you. When people come in your midst, you're the greatest tongue talkers on the earth. I mean, I can see in you, you're giving your bodies over to be burned. You speak in tongues of men and angels. Man, you have it. You know how to operate in faith. You know how to move mountains. Corinthian church, what an awesome group of people you are. You do not stand behind in the gifts of the Spirit. But when it comes to being spiritual, you are at the bottom of the list. I could not, sorry, it's Bible, I'm just quoting. I could not speak to you that operates in all the gifts. I could not speak to you as spiritual. Because you are carnal. 
Is he speaking to the world? Is he speaking to unsaved people? Is he speaking to the Jews? Or is he speaking to the church in Corinth? One of the biggest churches of the known time. He says, I want to talk to you, church. You're unspiritual, man. You can't, oh, man. Spiritual things must be compared. But he says, if you decide to be spiritual, you will start knowing where the wind comes from. You will start knowing where the wind is going to. You will be able to prophesy over the wind. <clears throat> hmm. I'm going to prove it to you a little while later. Is this good? I'm not knocking doctrines. I'm just preparing people for the greatest revival the world has ever seen. And we're going to be the people that's going to step, wham, step, step, wham, bam, into this great revival. Okay? Where were we? In, okay. Uh, first, we were in 1 Corinthians 2. Is that where we were? Hmm? Hmm? Three. Oh, excuse me. Uh, uh, okay, it's all right. Let's go to Revelation. If I go on now, it's going to be too tough. When I start speaking about Apollos and Peter, you know. I'm from Paulus. I'm from Peter. I'm from Durban. I'm from Pretoria. I'm from the kingdom of heaven. I'm identified with the church of Jesus Christ. God is my father. Not Paul, not Peter. Pope. Pope Peter, Pope John, Pope Paul. Huh? Revelation. Revelation 2. Zabras to bresinaka vorete. Let revelation knowledge eat us today, O God, like never before, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. Whoa, 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 how can we do this? Shall we do it all? Yeah, we can do it all. Okay, I just talked to you about the church in Corinth. No matter how they functioned in the power and stuff like that, Paul said, you need a spiritual awakening. Church in Corinth, you do not even know how to compare spiritual with spirit. So church in Corinth, listen to my words quoting from Ecclesiastes and and. John chapter 3, uh, church in Corinth, you need the wind of God to just come and blow in your midst again. Church at Corinth, you need the rain of the Spirit to just come and fall on you again. Church in Corinth, you need the fire of God to be burning in your spirits again. Okay? Listen to this shocker. The letters to the churches, what we call Bible today, which in those days were letters, which some people call epistles. The letter to the church at Corinth, the letter to the church at Colossia, the letter to the church at Galatia. It's letters that Paul wrote. He wrote the letters while he was in prison in other cities. So he writes stuff like, I could not be absent, I could not be present in the body. I was very absent, but I was very present in the spirit. And I saw your behavior. I want to talk to you. 1 Corinthians 5, Colossians 2, verses 5 through 15. Paul says, as I'm sitting here in Ephesus, my spirit is with the church in Colossia. I see that your behavior is not good. I see there are people that make, want to make you keep Sabbaths and make you, you know, eat kosher stuff. And, you know, uh, don't let people put you in bondage to them. So Paul is in Corinth, so he writes to the church in Rome. You know, I couldn't be there, you know, my body, but I was there in my spirit. So Paul understands spiritual. So he knows what's happening in all the churches because he's spiritual. But today we will not accept it if a prophet comes and says, I see you're speaking trash. You're telling your people that the miracles of Jesus is not really miracles. It's parables to show us how to behave our spiritual lives. Ah, oh, oh, you know what adjective you can put in there, man. When Jesus spat and healed a blind man, he healed a blind man. It was not speaking about the church that's now blind and can't see. He's talking about a blind man. 
When Jesus raised the dead, cool. He wasn't talking parabolically about how the church is going to be raised. He's talking about the girl that died. And maybe if we believe the miracles, we'll see miracles again. And not spiritualize the people. There's a group in South Africa called the Old Apostolic Church and the New Apostolic Church. They don't believe in Jesus Christ. They believe Jesus is a person that sits in Bloemfontein. And they, they believe there's no such a thing as sin. They say believe sin can come through stuff. And you know, uh, and, 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 and in their meetings, they all wear suits and hats on their heads of the ladies. And they smoke before the meeting. Then they go on and then they're holy. They've got all funny stuff, doctrines. But they say the Bible is a spiritual book. You got to spiritualize everything. And so does the apostles. So don't spiritualize the stuff. If it's there, it's there. If the Bible says Jesus was crucified, it's not a spiritual thing. He was crucified. He hung on that cross and he died. Physically died. Watch out for error, church. If it's not Bible, throw it away. I'm not hitting people. I'm speaking as a prophet. Sorry, I never say this. I never say I'm speaking as a prophet. I don't, I never do this. I, I'm Kubas Farid. I never say that. But today I feel in this revival thing, some prophet need to stand up and say, church, wake up. It's time for a super revival. And don't say anything till you listen to the three messages. Don't go out and say, I Kubas in a bit, I Kubas in a bit. No, it's not I Kubas, but no good saying I'm not talking out of the word of God, man. Okay, so there was this, there was this, is the right? If you are upset, would you phone me? Remember, I did phone you. Now, if I say anything, I did speak to groups of people concerning doctrines. And when they're there, they hear it. But when you're gone, it's too big a price to pay to throw the books away. So they rather keep their courses. There's something bigger than going into your bloodlines to find out who your great-great-grandfather was. You go to the cross and finish your fathers. You may guard your father and you get a new heritage. Some stuff was good while it lasted. But don't spiritualize miracles, it's real miracles. If you want to know about the church, read the epistles of Paul and tell the church how they need to behave. Okay, so Paul is writing to the churches by the Spirit. Okay, so John is on the Isle of Patmos. Man, I love this. I can do this 100 times over in one day. John is on the Isle of Patmos. We're going to come to Ezekiel now, but listen to John. On the Isle of Patmos, where is John? On Patmos. Who's around him? Prisoners. Okay? Where's John? And I, John, was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. If you didn't hear it, I'll try it again. Richard Harris did it very good in the Apocalypse movie. And I, John, was in the spirit. Where was John? Patmos. Who was surrounding him? Prisoners. Where was John? In the spirit. And I heard voices behind me like the sound of many waters. And I turned around to see which voice was speaking to me. Did John turn around? No. If he did, the prisoners would have asked him, are you okay? <laughs> John was in the spirit. So, mm. John, in the spirit. Oh, and the voice that spoke to me said, come up, John. Immediately as I was in the spirit, I saw a throne. Oh. Oh, in the spirit. And I looked around. Mm. And the prisoner says, John, are you all right? No, John was in the spirit. Are you okay? You're going to get it now. So there's a church in Ephesus. 
the model church, the church that most righteousness preachers would build their doctrine around, the, 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 the letter that's been used more than any other letter since the 1960s to teach how the church should be, be perfect. Book of Ephesians, you were chosen in the beloved. You are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly place. You are seated with Christ. You are saved by grace through faith, not of yourself as a gift of God. Oh, the Ephesian church, what awesome letters. What awesome letters. John is in the spirit. Jesus appears. Angel talk to him. Say, see that church? Let me talk to you about the Ephesian church. Say to the Ephesian church. These things say is he that hold the seven stars, which are people, which are leaders of the church. In his right hand, who walk in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. We're not going to go too much on that, but we discussed it a couple of weeks ago. The candlesticks were outside the Holy of Holies when John saw it, and inside were the lamps in Revelation 4 and 5. And God said to, 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 to John, get the lamp stands inside the Holy of Holies that I can put the lamps on the stands so that the church can be a city on a hill so that they can be the light of the world. But they're walking outside the Holy of Holies. They got the candlesticks, but there's no lamp on the stick. We're gonna see it later tonight. That's why Romans 12 says you must be fervent in spirit. That's why the effectual fervent prayer for righteous fervent means red hot. Okay, that's why you're supposed to be the light of the world. That's how you've got to be on fire in the Welsh revival. This is what Evan Roberts used to preach. In his sermon, he would stop and he said, have you still got the flame? Have you still got the flame? So that's when revival comes, we talk about the fire of revival. We talk about the great awakening. We talk about the flames are still burning. Read the Welsh revival. Everything is the flame that spread. The flame that spread. Okay, it's been prophesied. A fire will start in South Africa and spread over Africa. Fires of revival. Okay, either we throw it away or we start maybe joining the people that believe in the fire of revival. So John, the candlesticks are there, but the lamps are inside. Get the candlesticks in the lamp, in the Holy of Holies that I can put the lamps on. Listen to this. Don't worry, just get the message. Order, order, we'll give it to you. Listen to this. I know your works. Ephesian church, look this way, model church, chosen in the beloved accepted in God, blessed with all spiritual blessings, seated in heavenly places. The model church, I know your works. I know your labor. I know your patience. I know you cannot stand bear them which are evil. You have tried them which say they are apostles and they are not. And you have found them liars. You have borne, you have patience for my name's sake. You have labored and you have not fainted. Look this way. What an awesome church. I mean, these guys don't faint. They're laboring day and night for the master. They are exposing the false apostles. They are going. Man, they are the main elect, selected, super duper GTV, XLE, double exhaust pipe, gas flow church. I mean, they got it, man. All right? Please. Hmm? Verse 4. Please don't switch off. Nevertheless, I have against you because you have left your first love. Hmm. Song of Solomon, just look here before we read on. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6, 7, and 8. Love is a burning thing, and it makes a fiery ring. Formed by a wild desire, I've fallen to a ring of fire. I fell into a burning ring of fire. It burned, burned, burned the ring of fire. Mm -hmm. Love is a burning thing. Okay, I know Johnny Cash wrote that one, but Song of Solomon said, chapter 8, verse 6 to 8, love is a fire. Great waters cannot quench it. Bind me as a ring around your arm. Time it yourself so that we can get the fire keep on burning. Love burns. Great waters cannot quench it. So bind yourself to me. Ephesian church, you left the fire. You got all the works. You got all the doctrines. You got all the teachings. You're wonderful, but you lack the fire. Hmm? 
Hein? C'est une... Remember Psalm 1828? We know Psalm, Psalm 1829. With my God I run through a troop, I jump over a wall. Remember? But verse 18 says, The Lord will enlighten my candle. So I'm a stick, but I, I short the fire on my candle. Okay, just listen to this. Proverbs 20, verse 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Okay, you're supposed to get excited. Proverbs says, chapter 20, verse 27, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Psalm 18, 28 says, the Lord will enlighten my candle. Okay, put the two together. God is going to set my spirit on fire. Okay, put it together. God's going to set my spirit on fire. Okay. Who is he speaking to? A church that lacks nothing in doctrine. A church that lacks nothing in knowing who they are in Christ. A church who performs supernatural against false doctrines. But God said, you are so pure in doctrine. You are so pure in your stabilization. You are so pure in teaching the people the right stuff. But you know what you short? You short a revival of the fire of God. Huh? Is that right? Verse 5. So remember therefore... From whence you are fallen and repent and do your first works. Or else I will come unto you quickly and will remove your candlestick out of his place, except you repent. Okay, now we can read on to Revelation 4 and 5. John is now hearing the voice again. The Bible says, Immediately I was in the spirit. And when I turned around this time, I saw an open door. In heaven, the crucified Christ. I am the door, open door. And he said, come up. Now, John, John has turned around. He's now with the candlesticks. He was just now inside there where he saw one, you know, his eyes were like fire and his, you know, feet like bronze burning, a golden girdle, you know. He was just seeing him, white hair like wool glory. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Then he turned around and he had to go to the church. Candlesticks outside. Now he turns around again, see the open door. John, come up here. So he went in, and he saw seven lamps. He says, now, John, go tell the church, come up higher. You are the church. You are born again. You are washed in the blood. You are filled with the Spirit. But you need the flame. You need the fire. You need your spirit to be enlightened. You need a connection in the spirit realm. Come up to where you can see and experience the presence, the power, demonstration of spirit and power. You need to come up where you can be revived. Hmm? Ezekiel. 37, so well known, but tonight it's going to be a hey. We can speak heavenly Italian too. Umbra blues te riverai a tri, candeli pros tu cura marca. O Signor riposa, maha. I think God really loves me. Sterek. Shall I okay? Do you love me too? Thank you. I take that. Man. Man. Maybe we should just do two verses before this. We, we are in Ezekiel 37. But just quickly, chapter 1 and chapter 11. We can do the whole Ezekiel. Did you know this is the book that speaks more about the Spirit than any other book in the Bible? Have you read it already? Hey. Ezekiel speaks more about the spiritual stuff than any other book in the Bible. Have you read it? I mean, if you want to be spiritual, the book to read is Ezekiel. 
Because this is the guy that speaks about spiritual. Now it came to pass. In the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was amongst the captives by the river of Jebel, heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. Verse 4, and behold, there was a whirlwind. Behold, there was a cloud. Behold, there was a fire. Behold, there was a brightness about it. Come on, somebody say, Are you there? Okay. Brother Ezekiel. In the midst of the captives. Mm. Wow. Heaven. Fire. Clouds. Rain. So the people, the captives, say, hey, Ezekiel, hey, when are you okay, but? You know, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Where's Ezekiel? Okay, chapter 11, just keep it there. Spirit of understanding will knock you off your feet right now. Chapter 11, thank you, Father, for your revelation. Verse 11, Ahmed, verse 1, 11, verse 1. Moreover, the Spirit lifted me up and brought me unto the east gate of the Lord's house. Verse 24, afterwards, the Spirit took me up and brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God into Chaldea, to them of the captivity. So the vision that I had seen went up from me. Chapter 37. Please. Please. Mm -hmm. Are your ears? Elephant ears. Where's Ezekiel? Next to the river. Amongst who? The captives. Where is Ezekiel? To the Lord's house. Bam! Water coming out of the gate. Water coming out of the doors. Bam! And he put me down amongst the captives. And I watched them. And, you. and they were singing. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. And there we wept when we remembered. And they said, sing us one of those songs of Zion. And they said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? He said, well, the Spirit lifted me up again. Bam! And he put me down again. And all the captives, phew, what's happening to Ezekiel? What's happening to Ezekiel? <laughs> no! Ezekiel is sitting there. Nobody even knows he's traveling. Talking about spiritual... Thirty-seven. All you holy saints, partakers of the heavenly calling. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and He carried me out in the spirit. <laughs> Here again, the hand of the Lord carried me out in the spirit. Where's Ezekiel? By the river. Down by the riverside. Carried. Forgive us if we don't speak, you know, conventional things. In the spirit of the Lord. And he set me down in the midst of a valley. Here comes our meeting. And it was full of bones. Okay. Now, bam, there he goes again. Bam. Captain says, where did he go now? Where did he go now? No. <laughs> Nobody even noticed the guy has gone. I mean, the dude is flying all over Israel, all over Babylonia. He is all over Chaldea. He is visiting places, but he's sitting at the river. So maybe you should spend some time at the river. Okay. Listen to this. He put me down a valley. It was for, you heard this, Ezekiel 37. Listen to it tonight. And he caused me to pass by them round and about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very, very dry. Are you ready? I don't know how fast we can go with this message tonight. But out of revivals comes this type of song. 
I am dry and thirsty with simpering. Oh, I am dry and thirsty with simpering. Yeah, but Kubis, that's just a song. Oh, Psalm 63. Listen to this one. Psalm writer says, My soul longs for you. My flesh thirsts for you. When shall I come in your presence again? I'm thirsty because I'm outside. When will I come inside again? He says, uh, At night times I will meditate on their works. And with fatness, oil, anointing, I will be satisfied. God, because I'm thirsty, because I'm hungry for the touch of God in the very holy of holies, you're going to allow fatness to once again. And you shall receive power when that Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses again unto me. Wow. And these signs shall follow you that believe. Wow. And the works that I do shall you do also. And you shall do even greater works. Because the Spirit is going to bam on your spirit. And wow. You're going to be woo. Ye. Huh. Man. How long are we going to go? Remember Isaiah over and over and over. But 44 verse 3 says, I will pour floods upon the dry ground. God Almighty says it's going to come a day when I will pour floods upon dry ground. And the Spirit lifted me up again and carried me away. Pah, in a valley. And it was full of bones. Man, and were they dry. Now remember where we started. You do not know the way of the wind. You do not know the way of the spirit in the womb, in the bones, in the womb, in the bones, in the womb of a woman. So you know not the things of God. Nicodemus, you must be born again. Oh, Lord, how can I do this again? Oh, you don't know how the wind blows? But if you're born of the spirit... You're going to understand something about my wind. You're going to know something about my spirit. You're going to understand something about my power. You're going to see the kingdom. You're going to enter the kingdom. And the kingdom power will be able to operate in your life and through your life. You know, Nicodemus. And he said unto me, verse 3, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord, you know. Listen, God is saying, it's good that you know I know. Do you know why my spirit is carrying you around? I want you to know. Okay, just listen. It's good, Ezekiel. For 37 chapters, I've been carrying you all around the place. My spirit has been taking you here, my spirit. And you have seen a lot of stuff that very few eyes have seen, very few ears have heard, and has never come up in the heart of man. But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. I've been revealing stuff to you. No man knows my things except my Spirit. But my Spirit's been given to you so that you can know the things of the Spirit. And now they are spiritually discerned. Now you know I know. But Ezekiel, how far do you know? And again he said to me a second time. Prophesy upon these bones. Say unto them, O you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these dry bones, Behold, I will cause breath. Genesis 2. Ruach, wind, to enter into you, and you shall live. If you read Amplified, it'll say, Breath and spirit, breath and spirit, breath and spirit. For those who do read Amplified. And I will put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Why did he prophesy? Because all of a sudden he knew. He knew he had the authority. He knew he had the power. And, and, and there was a noise. Oh, we just had a stillborn baby last week. What you say is he was born dead. The first thing the doctor want to get out of that baby is scream, but he scream. If he doesn't scream, he take him up on his feet and he slap his bum. And 
and then they clean the thing up. <laughs> we want to clean them up before they scream so they never scream. Okay, thank you. <laughs> if you don't, you can preach your own sermon there. So I prophesied there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. Amplified that trembling and a rattling. Wee! And behold, there was sin used and stuff, but there was no breath. Amplified, there was no spirit. Then he said to me, listen to this dear church of Jesus Christ. Don't, don't go away, stay with me. Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind. Thus saith the Lord of God, come from the four winds. O oh, breath, and breathe upon these slain, so that they may live. Again, the book of Song of Solomon. Come, O oh wind, come from the north and blow through my garden. Come, O oh south wind, and blow through my garden, that the fragrances of my beloved will just spread all over. Forgive me, I'm getting lost now, but yeah, we, 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 we. So, prophesy over the wind, prophesy over the wind, prophesy over the wind. Say, come, O wind, breathe upon them. Breathe upon them, O breath of God, so that they may live. So I prophesied, and the breath and the spirit came into the bones, and they lived, and they stood up, an exceeding great host. God says, this is the prophecy, verse 14. I shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live. Hmm? Verse 27, my tabernacle shall be with them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Whoa, shaka baka baka boom, boom, bam. Too much for one night. Are you ready? It's good you try to psych the people up. But is revival of the Spirit scriptural? Well, I did it now for three nights, but I'll just throw one or two in. In Genesis 45, you don't have to go there. It's the story of Jacob and Joseph. And when Jacob finally revealed, uh, Joseph finally revealed himself to his brothers, and he sent wagons, and he said, go tell my father I'm alive. Go get my father. The Bible says, and when J Jacob saw the wagons. His spirit revived. When he first revealed himself to his brothers, he said to his brothers, don't be angry and don't be grieved. In other words, don't act soulish now. We preached it last night. You act soulish when you threw me in the pit and sold me to the Midianites. Now it's not a time to be soulish. It's time to be spiritual. Don't get angry and don't be grieved. Don't let your soul overrule. He says, because God has sent me before you to preserve life for you. Listen to that. First Thessalonians 5 verse 23 says the following. I pray to God that your spirit, your soul, and your body be preserved holy till the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, listen to this. We didn't write a lot tonight, but just get this word. I pray to God that your spirit will be preserved. Okay. Preservatives. Sodium, benzoate. It means this thing can stand on the shelf till the date that it expires. It's only next year on the 23rd of the 1st, 19, of 2009. Because of the preservative, yeah. I pray your body, your spirit, your spirit, soul and body be preserved till the coming, till the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I show you a mystery, we shall not all die. There's going to be a group that's going to take the preservation of the spirit. They're going to take the preservation of the soul. They're going to take the preservation of the body. The Catholics love the preservation of the body. That's why we had the book here the other day of the incorruptibles. 
they have hundreds and hundreds of saints whose bodies never corrupted. Bodies are preserved without any aid from outside. As warm as it were 700 years ago, blood is still alive, but the people are dead because the Spirit left them. But they believe in incorruption of the body. But they still believe the Spirit must one day come. What about preserved till the coming? Spirit and soul and body. Is it too much, Kubis? Hmm? Job chapter 10. I'm skipping some things. because. I Remember, what did I say? Job 10. Do you know we only have half an hour left? We only have half an hour left. Job 10. Is it water? We'll never finish this in half an hour. They couldn't finish it in 2,000 years. How can we do it in half an hour? <laughs> you need to get Wednesday, Friday, and last night. This is the fourth in the series. Because I refer now and then to stuff that I said there. But there was a man by the name of Samson. This was a strong dude, man. In his soulish power, he could pull the gates out of the city. City walls. Not by the Spirit. For those who want to check it out there in Judges. He was fed up with the harlot that he slept with. And he got angry in his soul. And he jumped out and pulled the city's gates out to say, accelerate. <laughs> Nothing about the Spirit mentioned. Took those gates, ran up Mount Hebron, 30 kilometers. You know? Threw it like a javelin all over the show. <laughs> That's soulish power. Hmm? Come on. If you get upset, have you seen what you can do? Have you seen what you can do? You can't clean that garage of yours for the last 20, 11 years. <laughs> and you tell the guy working in your garden, he must clean it, he must clean it. And you flip yourself. Nothing to do with your spirit. You flip soulishly. You get so angry, you clean that garage in 15 minutes. <laughs> you look at it, it's clean. Imagine if by your soul you can manifest such power. Imagine if the spirit gets control of you. Hmm? This is good sermon material, preachers. You can preach for years, good stuff, and get away from that doctrinal stuff that you put people in bondage. So here comes the spirit of the Lord upon Samson. Hey, there were thousand Philistines. Hey, 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 hey. One thousand. Two, 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 two. One, two, two. One thousand. Hey, 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 there's a job on a donkey. Hey, Spirit of the Lord. Whoa. Man, you think Asterix and Obelix can do it with magic potion? Watch if the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you and you get a donkey's jawbone. I mean, <laughs> Asterix and Obelix know nothing. Asterix, oh, the Gauls and the Romans, bam! <laughs> Dogmatics and arithmetics and all the ticks can't help you, man. I mean... You're with me now. I see I've got some people interested now. But here's Samson. I mean, Spirit of the Lord. Charged. Wow. Green light says, fully charged. Pull out the plug. Bam. Pick up the jawbone. B. Huh? We thousand Philistines. Martial arts. Ah. Dangerous human beings. Ah. You know. 
Kick one day, hit one day, knock one day, kick another. One donkey, donk, donkey dobo. One <laughs> donkey dobo. Good. So here comes Samson. Thousand dead Philistines. So he goes, sits down by the same jawbone. He lifts it up. He says, oh God, with one jawbone, I've killed thousand Philistines. Now I'm so thirsty. For what was he thirsty? The Bible says, and God claved a hollow in the rock and water came out. And his spirit revived. I will pour water on him that is thirsty. I will pour floods upon the dry ground, Isaiah 44. I will pour water on him that is thirsty. I will pour floods upon the dry ground. And I was down in that valley and they were full of bones and they were very dry. He said, Ezekiel, can these bones live? I said, God, you know. He says, why don't you just prophesy over the wind? He says, people don't know the way of the wind because they don't understand the things of the Spirit. But Nicodemus, if you can understand how spiritual birth operates truly in your life, you can understand the way of the wind. Prophesy, wind of God. So let the wind blow. Let the rain pour. Father, send your rain, send your oil, send your fire, send the river. You know, we are not halfway. Where are we? Verse 12. You have granted me life and favor. Job 10, that's where we were. And your visitation has preserved my spirit. I'm going to say it, I said it Friday, but listen to this one. The visitation of God preserved the spirit of holy saints. I pray to God that your spirit, soul, and body be preserved, 1 Thessalonians 5. So Job comes and tells us how God will preserve my spirit by a visitation. No, 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 Kubis. No, 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 no. I've got a set of tips by this well-known man of God. I want to be a habitation. I don't want a visitation. It's good cliches, but it's not good word. Now, don't judge you haven't heard me preach. And by you're not spiritual enough to judge me in any case. I don't say you're not, I'm spiritual. I just say the Bible says you cannot judge a spiritual man. But a spiritual man can judge a natural man. So it depends on where your doctrines are. So listen to this one. Where was I? No, brother. These visitations that people pray and talk about, we want to be a habitation. We want God to stay with us forever and never leave again. These visitations of revival, we don't. Jesus said, I am with you. Always. Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He says, God is with you and nothing can be against you. First Corinthians 3, Second Corinthians, First Corinthians 6, Second Corinthians 6, Ephesians chapter 2, 22. Know ye not that you are the temple and that God dwells in you? You are already a habitation. But Job 5 says, I will visit my habitation. So listen to this. God is all over all the time. He'll never, you are a habitation. You can't change into habitation. He already prepared you a place in John 14 when he died. You're already the temple. But the temple needs a visitation. <laughs> God 
God is present. But manifestly, uh oh, this is Moses. You see that cloud on the mountain that says, I'm here. So the cloud covered the mountain. It says, Do you see that cloud? I'm here. But only on the seventh day will I come down on the mountain. And on that seventh day, you must come up on the mountain. And then we can meet face to face. So all Israel say, ooh, look at the cloud. You know, the cloud is covering the mountain. Smoke is there. Fire, you know, oh, God is there. Moses, no, God's not there. God's there, but God's not there. So, so this is the habitation. God says, on that mountain, I will stay and meet with you. There's the cloud. Everybody sees the cloud. But God says, Moses, I'll only come on the seventh day. So on the seventh day, it's time for you to come up. I don't know if we're going to come to the seventh day thing. Maybe we'll leave it for next Saturday. But when you come up, I will come down. And we will visit for a while. And then, Pam, gone is in. But where's God? Cloud is still with him all day long. Fire is still with him all night long. Where's God? Come, just help me. Just help me. They were the dwelling place of God. They were the habitation of God. But God didn't manifest all the time. Yet they had the cloud. Yet they had the fire. But God didn't manifest. So we are the temple. We are the habitation. But we don't see revival fires burning all over. We don't see the wind of the Spirit blowing all over. We don't see cripples getting up all over. We don't see blind seeing all over. But we do see it here. And we see it in different other places. I mean, we have the handful of people now on the world that can really prove God is present. Come on, why would people come from all over the world to our conferences? Why would people go all over the world when they heard, oh, Brownsville, revival broke out, 1995, Father's Day. Why would millions travel there to go see? 1994, Toronto, a little shop front place that couldn't take 200 people. Why would millions go to see the outpouring? Because God manifested. We call it revival. Why would thousands stream to this place in a month? From all over the world. End of the month again, we're getting so many people from the United States of America. We have them every weekend from different countries. Why would they come? They phone me from America. We get emails. Your DVDs is running through the United States. People are so excited about what God is doing in Stillfontaine. You can have it in your church. Prophesy over the wind. Know where it's coming from. Know where it's going to. Understand the things of the Spirit of the Almighty God. Somebody, let's cl close. Psalm 65. I'll just throw in that Adam thing. Hmm? Psalm 65. Chill, okay. Hey, thank you. It's very good. Clive, what say you, bro? Good stuff, this. Verse 9. You visit the earth. You saturate it with water. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide them with grain when you have prepared the earth. You water the fields, furrows abundantly. You settle the riches of it. You make the soil soft with showers, blessing the sprouting of its vegetation. You crown the year of your bounty you, and your goodness, and the tracks of your chariot wheels drip with fatness. <laughs> he rides on the winds. He rides on the storms. He rides on the clouds. All different psalms. God rides on wings. God rides on clouds. He says, when God comes in those chariot wheels, I mean that cloud, I mean that wind, I mean that storm, that Holy Ghost thing that's coming, it's going to drip the fatness. So you're going to sit in the oil of the anointing, and bam, wham, wham, drip all over the house. We are in need of a supernatural, spiritual, Holy Ghost revival. On the seventh day, I'm going to manifest myself. Moses. First Corinthians 15, we do it fast because I want to close with something that I just want to throw in. 
We're just going to touch on it. Are you hot or are you okay? Okay. Or it's just me that's pumping adrenaline here. Well, your heart rate is 72. Mine is about 140 now. Excited. Excited. Thank you. Take it all. Lord Jesus. Revival. We really need to get that song on our cell phones this time. We did it about a year ago, so we took that revival, revival. We just took that Belfast revival just to sort of make it a ringtone and put it on our staff's telephones. I think we need to do it this week. Everybody that can do it here in the staff, and if you want it, come download it here by us. Just put it on your cell phone just, just for the month of April. When your phone rings, it says, revival, revival. Yeah, welcome to revival. Oh, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Let's manifest the thing. Let's know there's a wind blowing. Oh, there's a wind blowing all across the land. I know where it comes from, and I know where it goes. I'm not in the not knowing. I'm in the knowing. I forgot to give you the rest of the Ephesian church. Remember when it was the Ephesian church? Listen to this. Paul writes to the Ephesians. Grace be unto you. God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus. In whom you are chosen and accepted in the beloved. Pray. Tell them with verse 15. I pray. Since I heard of your love and your faith, I'm going to pray for you. For the spirit of wisdom, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened so that you can know the things that God has given you. So what is Paul saying to the Ephesian church? You carnal. says, I want to write you that you can know the things that the spirit has given you. Verse 15 to 22. I want you to know. Sorry, that's why Paul wrote the letters. He wanted the churches to be revived. They were all in a cool state. Sorry, church, I tell you, the churches that Paul wrote to, he wrote to them to, to cause them to have a spiritual renewal. All of them, be revived, be revived, be revived. He ends the letters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus be with your spirits. So what was the letters about? Come on, Galatians 4.19. Pray that Christ be formed in you again, man. I pray that you will be right. Why did you start in the spirit? Now you're back in the flesh. Get your spiritual revival. All the church's letters are for a spiritual revival. We take it as the Alpha and the Omega letters. Those letters are for revival. Did you see it? Sorry, I know this is a shocker for our teachings Tonight, but yiki viki vuku juku vuku waga baga na kreba do komando do dresd na avlia erge nibla hor nos kilbande li avreda lebris tilibris de no more. You have an ear in your spirit, let it hear, because the spirit is speaking profound words that you have not known before. But if you take heed to the teaching, you'll see how you will grow. Right? So take it, man. We want to close, so I'll just quote scriptures because I've got so much to read, but I'm doing it because I've got 60 minutes. Listen to this. Acts chapter 3, verses 19 through 21. Just listen. Paul says, Peter, excuse me, Paul. Peter says, Repent ye and be converted. When times of refreshing will come from the presence of God, and he may send him who was previously preached unto you, namely Jesus, whom the heavens must retain till the time of restoration of all things of which all the prophets spoke about. Listen to the end of verse 21. Since the world began. Amplified Bible. 
since the ancient memory of man. So Peter says, there's something that's in the ancient memory of man. Something that when the world began, before man had a history. I want you to go back right there. And when that happens, Jesus will come again. Are you there? 1 Corinthians 15. I don't want to lose you, man. Maybe we should just stop and leave this whole teaching for next week. Galatians 1.10. Should I listen to you or to God? So it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, a quickening spirit. How about that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. Afterward, spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man, the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, so are they which are earthy. As is the heavenly, so are they which are heavenly. As we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Can't do it all in one night, but I'll give you a glimpse. Remember spiritual, natural, spiritual, natural, spiritual. That which is spiritual was not first. That which is natural. Psalm 8 and Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2, Paul quotes from Psalm 8. said, as it is written in a certain place, what is man? That thou art mindful of him, the son of man, that you visit him. You visit him. You crown him with glory and honor, and you set him over the work of your hands to rule and have dominion. In submitting everything to him, we do not yet see everything in submission to man. But we do see Jesus who for a little while was made lower than the angels through the suffering because he wanted to take many sons into glory. So he abolished and brought death to naught in him that had the power of death so that you can now be sons of God and it's not shame to call you brethren. Okay, I'll try again the main light. Highlights. What is man that you visit him? When you visit him, you crown him with glory and honor and you set him over the work of your hands to rule and have dominion. Over the work of your hands. Does that sound spiritual? You can say yes, it's all right. Because it's spiritual. He says, but we do see Jesus. So he did it, now we can do it. He wanted to take many sons to glory. But the first man, Adam, was of the earth, earthy, natural the second man was the Lord from heaven and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit where the first Adam was made a living soul the last one a quickening spirit okay. are you ready so uh, on the seventh day Jesus said to Peter James and John let's go to the mountain of the Lord and seek his face. And when they went up to the mountain, a cloud covered the mountain. And there appeared Moses and Elijah, who saw such stuff. And they talked about how he would exit from Jerusalem. Jesus said, don't tell anybody before it's happened. And God said to Moses, the cloud will cover the mountain, but on the seventh day, come up on the mountain. I will meet you face to face and speak to you the living oracles of God. Exodus 19, Acts chapter 7. So God said in the beginning, now remember Acts, since the ancient history of man, memory of man, since the world began. You must listen, this is going to shock you out of your wits. So, in the beginning God created heaven and earth. Earth was empty, void without form, darkness covered the earth, waters. The Spirit of the Lord was on the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. 
God divided the light from the darkness. God said the light was good, you know. And God said that the firmament and the waters divided from the waters. And God said, let there be flowers and herbs and stuff. And God said, let there be lights, sun to rule by day, moon to rule by night. And God said, let there be beasts on the field. Let there be fowl in the air. Let there be fish in the sea. And it was so beginning and end of the fifth day. And God said, let us, okay, English grammar, let us make man. So I say, let us build a church. Are we building a church? No, I'm talking about we're going to build a church. Let us go, it means we're still going to go. Let us make man, you've got to take this. You don't have to. We can just listen and go study it for yourself. Let us make man in our image and after our own likeness. Let them have dominion and let them rule. Let us, let us, let us, let us, let us. And it was the beginning and the ending of day six. God didn't make anything. On the seventh day, God rested from all the stuff that he made. And this is the history of the creation of heaven and earth. And on the seventh day, God rested. And God formed man out of the dust of the earth. And God breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. The first man, Adam, was of the earth, earthy, natural. Adam was not the ruler, the king that we always preach. Just wait. Psalm 8 says it and Hebrews 2 says it. We never saw it. But we do see Jesus who made it. But the Bible do say Adam was natural. The first man, Adam, not the one after the fall, the one before the fall was natural. Because he was made a living soul. But the second man came from heaven and said, Nicodemus, if you're now born of the Spirit, you can understand the wind, you can know the stuff of God. Man, I gave glimpses of it throughout eternity, but if I come with visitation after visitation, I will crown you more and crown you more till you understand, my goodness, I've got authority and I've got dominion. Second man authority, second man dominion, second man rulership. Is it rough? Hebrews chapter 4. He says, uh, there remained therefore a rest for the people of God. For it is written, on the seventh day God rested. So let us labor to enter into that rest. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting through the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. So when the word of God hits me right smack bang, it'll separate Adam from Christ. It'll take me out of man and put me into Christ. It'll pay, took me out, take me out of the natural man into the spiritual man. So when did God make man in his rest? I can now talk about scripture. I can take on hours, hours, hours. So when God rested, he finished creation. He said, our idea was this, to make a man in our image. To make a man that will have dominion and authority over everything. This is our idea. But then God stooped down and made a natural man. 
This is awesome stuff. So, when Satan came, Adam could subdue nothing. Couldn't subdue him, couldn't resist him, couldn't have authority over him. Because he's a natural man. He was a living soul. He only had the breath of God in his nostrils. Job says it twice. The breath of God is in my nostrils. The spirit of the living God has made me. And the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Soul life. But you can be born again. You can have your spirit connected to the divine spirit of a holy God. And you can step into the second man. Hmm? So, uh, every time when it was the seventh day, Jesus walked into the synagogue. Saw a man with a withered hand. The Pharisees, the Sadducees are natural. Oh no, this is the seventh day. You can't work. Jesus said, uh-uh, this is where my father worked on the seventh day. Hmm? So what work is on the seventh day? Work towards man. And there was a woman bowed down with the spirit of infirmity. And on the Sabbath day, Jesus said, woman, you are my daughter. No, no, why do you heal them on the seventh day? Oh, this is where God labors. Oh, but we thought it's a rest. Well, come unto me, you, all you are labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest. So labor to enter the rest. So uh, the sixth day, it's just passed eight years ago. For says Peter, one day is a thousand, years thousand. So we have just entered the seventh day. So on the seventh day, creation has been waiting for the sons of God to now come to the front. So God says, it's time for a visitation. My temple's been standing now for 2,000 years. It had times of refreshing times of refreshing. I think it's time for a super visitation. Yes. To bring restoration since the ancient memory of man. So I want to take you to Genesis 1 where my idea was put forth in Hebrews 2. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Let them have dominion and let them rule. Let's go back to the Genesis 1 and not the Genesis 2 one. Not the Genesis 3 one either. We always refer to the fall of Adam. What about the created Adam? Natural soul. But the idea of God was birthed in Christ. Repeated in Hebrews 2. And he says, uh, this is what we now wait for. He wanted to take many sons into glory. So what do we need? A revival of spirit. Very scriptural. I can go on and on and on and show you the scripturality of spiritual revival, spiritual renewal, a divine visitation. Let's get on the camera. I want to share, say goodbye. We've got a minute. That's my back part. That's my front part. I don't look too bad, do I? Hello, you. Am I good? Okay. You got two minutes before we're off the air. Please, don't just judge. Go read the Bible. Thanks for tuning. This was a live broadcast coming to you from Spirit Word Ministries on the Spirit Word channel. And come next weekend, we're going on with a series on spiritual revival. It's something that people don't want today, but it's something we desperately need today. God is about to visit His temple. God is about to pour out His Spirit on dry and thirsty land. If you're hungry and thirsty, God's going to visit you. If you cry out for a spiritual revival, God's going to send it. And I tell you, pray this prayer that we sang tonight. Send your rain, send your fire, send the oil. Oh, in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for all our viewers, a supernatural spiritual revival in every person, every home, every ministry, every business. Let revival hit the earth. Let a divine visitation come. Come and walk with us. Jesus, and let it drip with fatness. Let the oil just drop down. Let the rivers be there in Jesus' name. Thanks for tuning. We love you.